Today is the last session of this week. So we are finally on a, this day. That is the session number four. Uh, we are going to complete the, uh, the week number three. And we are just going to have one more week um, of topics. And we are going to end the module the next week. So after this one, we are just going to have four more sessions. And we are going to complete the uh, information, the activities, and the whole thing that we are doing in this course. Um, for today, we are going to continue with the uh, part that we were uh, seeing yesterday. And in this case, we were like using a conversation that is related to invitations. So we are going to talk about uh, invitations and um, a specific structure that we can use to make these invitations. But this structure is not something new. We already have seen this structure in a previous session. So we are going to make like a review of this um, structure. And then we are going to create invitations to different things uh, for a date, to see a movie, to, um, to do different things. And we are going to learn something new about a specific form to send messages using um, letters and numbers between the message. And you are going to interpret those um, messages with the information that we are going to see on the, uh, the chart that we are going to use for uh, this kind of messages. So you are going to find what is like the meaning of the messages and also you are going to create different uh, messages with that information. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So finally, we are in the last session uh, of this week. So we are almost done with this month. Uh, we just have one more week. Good evening, and we are just going to complete four more days. So we are almost, almost at the end. We need to, to keep going because um, it's like a couple of hours. So if you can like uh, think about the time, we are just going to have four more hours working on this uh, module. So after this hour, you are just going to have four more hours uh, to complete this information and these uh, these sessions. So we need to, to keep doing our uh, and keep uh, fighting with this information. So uh, we are going to work today with the topics that we are going to develop. In this case, we are going to have um, grammatical structure that we are going to use to create invitations. So we are going to talk about the invitations and how to create this information. Um, we are going to make a review of this topic uh, because we already have information related to this structure and we already know how to use this structure. But we are just going to remember some information because we are going to use it to create some invitations to do different activities. And then we are going to read something because we are going to have a, um, a reading part. And you know that we have four uh, macro skills that we need to develop when we are learning a new language. And in this case, we are going to focus on reading. The four macro skills are listening, speaking, writing, and reading. And in this case, we are going to see just reading. And we are going to find different elements through um, different techniques that we can apply when we are reading a text. But in this case, it's like most or is 
Yes, it's most used when uh, we are reading for an exam or for um, a evaluation. Because when we are reading a book that we like, uh, we are not going to use this kind of um, techniques because you know that uh, we are enjoying the, uh, the reading and we want to have that time. We need to relax, we need to read, uh, we need to focus on the information. But uh, in this case, uh, we are going to use these uh, techniques because um, we need to find some information. We need to just look for the answers of something. So that's why we are going to talk about a little bit about different techniques that we can apply when we want to know something specific. Entonces, vamos a ver en la última parte, o un, una parte, un ejercicio de lectura. Nos vamos a enfocar mucho en los ejercicios de lectura. En esta, va a ser uno, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver simplemente uno, pero vamos a hablar un poco de las técnicas que podemos aplicar a la hora de encontrar información o a la hora que estamos buscando información específica sobre un tema. Porque recuerden que en muchos de los casos, cuando estamos haciendo una evaluación, eh, necesitamos... A tener eh, tiempo suficiente para poder contestar todas las preguntas. So in this case, we are going to talk about a little bit about the uh, different techniques that we can apply. In this case, we are just going to talk about two different techniques. And then we are going to see other two, but we are going to focus just on these two. Now, we have this conversation that we were uh, reading yesterday that is about invitation it is talking about an invitation and we need to focus on that part because we are going to make these invitations we are going to talk about what are uh, these kind of things or how can we create a statements or questions because in this case you know that it is very uh, important that we can create uh, questions to make invitations so we are going to re read this uh, conversation and then we are going to see what is the structure that we are using to create these statements. And we are going to make a review of that structure. It's a very specific structure that we need to use. So in this case, we have, I have tickets to the soccer match on Friday night. That is a statement. Ahí tenemos una oración. I have tickets to the soccer match on Friday. Yo tengo boletos para el partido de la, del viernes por la noche. Esa es la información que yo estoy brindando. Tengo la pregunta. Would you like to go? ¿Te gustaría ir? That is my structure. Would you like to go? Y tenemos la respuesta. Thanks. I'd love to. What time does it start? Me encantaría. ¿A qué horas comienza? At 8. That sounds great. So, do you want to have dinner at 6? Eh, suena increíble. ¿Te gustaría eh, cenar a las 6? Mm, I'd like to, but I have to work late. Me gustaría, pero tengo que trabajar hasta tarde. Oh, that's okay. Let's just meet at the stadium before the match around 7.30. No hay problema. Eh, vamos a vernos en el estadio antes del partido por las 7.30 ok, let's meet at the gate nos vamos a ver en la entrada principal, en el portón as you can say that sounds fine, see you there, eso suena increíble nos vemos ahí so, the thing is that we are going to talk about the use of wood Vamos a hablar del uso del wood, que como les decía, ya hemos visto un poco de esta información. Ya sabemos más o menos cómo se utiliza el wood, así que solo vamos a hacer un review de esta parte. Because we were talking about um, the different uh, you, uh, words that we can use to talk about future, and we can see something related to this one. And now we are going to make this review uh, related to the use of wood. So we are going to begin with this information and then we are going to continue with other things that we are going to do. So the topic is use of wool. El uso de wool. Vamos a aprender a usar el wool 
qué es, cómo lo utilizamos, en qué lo vamos a utilizar o para qué lo vamos a utilizar, and that information, the, the one that we are going to see right now. So, in this case, it says that would is an auxiliary verb. Again, we have these auxiliary verbs that is giving me some kind of information, some specific information. In some cases, the auxiliaries are not going to change a lot the information of the way in which we are going to um, like give the meaning of the sentence. In this case, it's just to make a reference. And in this case, we are going to use it when we are making request or invitation or something like that, but we are going to see. Or also it can be a modal auxiliary verb. We use wool and we are going to see in which cases we are going to use this structure. So in this case, we are going to use wood to talk about the past. To talk about the future in the past. It came confusing, right? And express the conditional mood. So we have three different things in which we are going to use this structure to talk about the past, to talk about the future in the past, and express the conditional mood. We also use will for the other functions. So we are going to see what is the other function that we can give to this word. And in this case, it says that we are going to use this structure uh, to express desire, polite request, and questions, opinions, and hope, which and regret. Imagine the different things in which we are going to use this uh, word. Podemos utilizar esta palabra para hablar o para expresar deseos para expresar o para decir eh, o hacer peticiones amables, preguntas, dar opiniones, decir cuáles son como nuestros deseos, cuáles son como nuestras culpas y cosas que nosotros esperamos que sucedan. So in this case, eh, you can see that the use of wool is related to eh, being something like polite or something like that. So in this case is when you are going to use this kind of um, a specific form and you need to, to be polite with others. Es cuando queremos ser amables con las personas que utilizamos esta parte del de wood. So what is the structure of this uh, word? So the structure is the following. We have the subject. The auxiliary verb would. and the main verb. 
And of course, we need a complement in this case. En este caso, podemos ver que eh, nuestro auxiliar solo tiene una sola forma. No hay cambios para este. No hay como diferentes eh, estructuras, diferentes formas, diferentes reglas. Esta es una sola. Aquí vamos a utilizar el will con todos los eh, pronouns, con todos los pronombres. Tanto eh, primera persona, segunda persona del singular, tercera persona del singular, persona del plural. All of them are the same. Todos ellos son el mismo uso del will. Cuando utilicemos el would, nuestro verbo va a ir en forma base. No va a cambiar. Lo vamos a escribir como se encuentra antes de hacerle los cambios. No va a ir con el ing, no va a ir con s, no va a ir, no. Va a ser en forma base. I'm going to mark this with numbers. So we're going to see some examples. Following the same structure. So in this case, I'm going to take this one to have it here. And you are going to see the uh, form in which we can create these statements. We are going to have three. One is positive. Next is uh, the second one. The second one is uh, negative. And then we are going to make also a question. So we are going to see the three different forms. Vamos a ver cómo queda con las tres formas diferentes. So, the positive. It said, I would like tea. Me gustaría té. Ahora, en una forma negativa. Um, she would not go. She would not go. Go. En este caso no estamos utilizando los complementos. Aquí simplemente nos quedamos hasta el verbo. Bueno, en el caso de I like tea, tea is our complement. But in this case, she would not go. We are ending this one as um, in the main verb. And the question, you know that in this case, you are going to use the, uh, the change in the structure. We are going to use the auxiliary verb at the beginning. And then we are going to continue with the other information that we have on the statement. Would you help? Podrías ayudar? Es como estar diciendo, podrías ayudar? So in this case, uh, in some uh, structures, We can change a little bit the use of the verb and we can create other structures in which we can add different uh, things. Podemos tener otras dos estructuras, otras dos formas de hacer nuestras oraciones y la primera es usando el have y el past participle y también el verbo to be con el gerundio que es el ing. other forms. Have plus past participle. And we have the example. He will have gone. And the next one, B plus I and G. 
And the example, he will be going. What are the uses of the word would? ¿Cuáles son los usos que le vamos a dar nosotros a esta estructura? Vamos a comenzar con would for the past. So in this case, we often use would as a kind of past tense or will of will or going to. Este lo utilizamos como eh, cierta, por, de cierta forma como el pasado de will y de going to. And we have two examples. And the first one, even as a boy, he knew that he will succeed in life. Even as a boy, he knew that he will succeed in life. I thought it would rain so I brought my umbrella. In this case, we can also use this structure when we are uh, using the reported speech. Esto del reported speech es cuando nosotros de, damos un mensaje que eh, pues alguien más lo dijo. En este caso es cuando nosotros pasamos una información eh, que otra persona ha dicho. O cuando estamos platicando con alguien y decimos, ah, es que ella dijo que mañana íbamos a tener un examen, por ejemplo. So, in that kind of information or in that kind of things, you can use this reporter speech, que es básicamente como eh, decir algo que alguien más dijo. But give me a second. Okay, so in that case, we are going to use also the word will para poder dar esa información o poder repetir un poco, ¿verdad? Lo que otra persona ha dicho. So we have some examples here. It says, she said that she would buy some eggs. 
ella dice que va a, que en este caso pues podemos decir que compraría, ella dijo que compraría algunos huevos. Y la oración original es como que yo le estoy diciendo, I will buy some eggs, voy a comprar algunos huevos y alguien más dijo o repitió lo que yo le dije, pero como no lo va a repetir de la misma forma y con la misma estructura, entonces ahí es donde utilizamos el would. Next one. The candidate said that he wouldn't increase taxes. And we have here the phrase that this person say, I want increase taxes. Next one. Why didn't you bring your umbrella? I told you it would rain. Why didn't you bring your umbrella. Told you it will rain. So in this case, we have the phrase, it's going to rain. We use, uh, we often use would not to talk about past refusals. And we have here. He wanted a divorce, but his wife would not agree. Next one. Yesterday morning, the car wouldn't start. And the last, the last use of wood in the past is that we sometimes use wood uh, rather than use uh, the word, the, the, the expression used to when we are talking about uh, habitual past behavior. A veces utilizamos el wood en lugar de utilizar el used to, que ustedes saben que el used to es bastante utilizado para hablar de hábitos que teníamos en el pasado, pero que ahora ya no los tenemos. Entonces, en este caso, a veces utilizamos would en lugar de used to.
And we have some examples. We have here, every weekday, my father would come home from work at 6 p.m. and watch TV. Every weekday, my father would come six PM and watch television. Sometimes she'd phone me in the middle of the night. We will always argue, we could never agree. Okay, this information is just for the use of wood in the past. And we are just going to see the second one that is the use of wood when we are talking about future in the past. We are not going to see the number three because um, we are not focused on that part. We are just going to focus on past and future tenses. And then we are going to continue with the other things. And this one is kind of short. Es bastante eh, corta esta información del wood for future in past. So in this case, when talking about the past, we can use would to express something that has not happened at the time we are talking about. En este caso, estamos hablando, ¿verdad? De que vamos a utilizar el would para expresar que algo no ha sucedido en el tiempo del que estamos hablando. Por eso es que decimos, ¿verdad? Que estamos hablando incluso del futuro porque no ha sucedido algo. De, en el momento que nosotros estamos hablando. Tenemos dos ejemplos. Number one, in London, she met the man that she would one day marry. He left five minutes late, unaware that the delay would save his life.
Ok, tenemos los dos ejemplos. In London, she met the man that she would one day marry. En Londres, ella conoció al hombre que algún día se casará con ella o con el que se casará. Aquí no ha sucedido, pero estamos hablando de algo probable o algo que quizás vaya a suceder en el futuro. Y luego, he left five minutes late, unaware that the delay would save his life. Él se fue hace cinco minutos, o sea, se fue cinco minutos tarde, eh, inconsciente de que ese retraso le salvaría la vida. So in that case, we have just this information for would in the future and past. So we have some information related to this structure and how to use it eh, to create a statement. Now, in this case, we have uh, the information of the conversation. Um, And we are going to work with that part. But I need to show you something uh, that is like the last thing about the, the wood. Vamos a ver algo relacionado al wood. Pero give me a second. It's charging, so give me a second. I think is. Mm, kind of a slow. I think it's not going to charge right now. Okay, while this one is charging or not, I don't know if if, if it's going to to charge. Um. In this case, we are going to use the word would to create invitations. In this case, we are going to use this word to um, to make this kind of uh, uh, invitations. And we are going to um, have like some responses. And you are going to think about a invitation that you can make. Les voy a poner algunas respuestas a eh, invitaciones y ustedes van a tratar de crear una invitación eh, que esté referida a esa respuesta. O sea, según la respuesta, ustedes me van a poner eh, qué invitación quedaría o qué frase quedaría con esa respuesta. Bien, de... In the first part, I'm going to write some um, invitations and you are going to give me an example of a response. And in the second part, you are going to give me the invitation and I'm going to give you the uh, response. Vamos a hacer dos partes. Una, donde yo les voy a dar las invitaciones y ustedes me van a responder. Y la segunda, donde ustedes me van a hacer las invitaciones y yo respondo. Then we are going to uh, think about three different things that we would like to do. Vamos a pensar en tres cosas que nos gustaría hacer. Y vamos a hacer las invitaciones para eso. 
Les voy a poner algunos ejemplos de cómo podríamos responder a sus invitaciones para que ustedes puedan hacer sus eh, preguntas. Then we are going to do a writing exercise, but in this case it's related to a different kind of messages or different kind of text. Vamos a aprender a escribir unos mensajes con código. So we are going to do something very interesting in a couple of seconds. But we're going to begin with the examples of uh, invitations because the platform is not charging right now. Okay, we are going to see the first part. I don't know why is this one. Give me a second. This is uh, sending me um a notification, but I don't know where it is. Okay, I think it's okay. I have tickets to the baseball game on Saturday. Would you like to go? Aquí en esta pregunta ustedes pueden responder de diferentes maneras. So you need to, to think about the response. Next one. Would you like to come over for dinner tomorrow night? And number three, would you like to go to a pop concert with me this weekend? Would you like to go with me? Uh, to go to a pop concert with me this weekend? And the second part, for this one, you are going to make the question. And this is my response. For the number one, I said, yes, I love to. Thank you.
Next one, number five. And I said, well, I like to, but I have to study. And the last, the last one, that is number six. Yes, thank you. I really like to see it. Okay, aquí tenemos las dos partes del de ejercicio. I'm going to take this a little bit like this. Mm, I think I come to move this one like this. Ahí tenemos las dos partes. Uno donde ustedes me van a responder a mis eh, invitaciones y la segunda donde ustedes me van a hacer invitaciones y ahí tienen la respuesta. For this one, we are going to have five minutes. Then I'm going to go one by one. Vamos a ir respondiendo una por una. Quiere decir que vamos a empezar con la número uno de las respuestas. Ustedes me van a poner sus respuestas en el chat y vamos a ir leyendo cuáles son las respuestas que ustedes darían a esa invitación. Luego la dos, luego la tres. Después vamos a ir con la primera invitación. Vamos a ver qué invitación hacen ustedes según la respuesta. Y vamos a ir uno por uno leyendo sus respuestas. So, we are going to have five minutes. Eh, I think that 8.48. It is enough to complete this exercise. So let's go.
teacher. Tell me. Uh, in this case, we can say you uh, negative answers. Yes, you can use negative answers or if you want to be polite, you can say I would like I would love to do it or I would like to to go but I have to do something else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have here some answers and they are pretty, pretty good answers because in the first one we have, yes, I like to, I like to go, but I have to study. Me encantaría, me gustaría ir, pero tengo que estudiar. Very good. Next one, yes, I like to go. Sí, me gustaría ir, en esa sí es una respuesta positiva. Next one. This one is very good also. I would like to go, but I don't know about anything about baseball games. Me gustaría ir, pero no sé nada sobre estos juegos, o sea, sobre el, el baseball. Very good. Excellent. No, I wouldn't like the uh I wouldn't like to go because I don't like baseball. Mm, excellent. No, I wouldn't like to go. Direct, directamente, ¿verdad? No me gustaría ir. That's good. So you can uh, keep writing your um, answers and your uh, invitations. Podemos seguir escribiendo las respuestas y las invitaciones para irlas leyendo. I'm going to take some examples uh, to write it on the document. So just like, um, just to see some of your response. I'm going to take one of these, a positive, a negative, and another one. Okay. Now, for the number two, you can write your answers. Okay. 
Okay, give me a second. I'm just... Oh, no, don't worry. It's not you. Oh, yes, it is you. No. Mm, no, it's not your group. Okay, for the next one, that is the number two. Let me see. Okay. Um, we are talking about pop concert. And you said, no, I wouldn't like to go. I don't like that kind of music. So it, it direct. So good. Excellent. Next one. Yes, I would love to. Ah, for the number... Yes, for number two. Ah, the next one is for number three. For number two, yes, I would love to have dinner with you tomorrow. Excellent. Next one. I like, uh -huh. I love to, yes, I would love to come over for dinner. Thank you. Yes, thanks. You, um, I would really like to see it. Yes, I will, but you pay the dinner. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's very good. Excellent, because that person is making the invitation, so he wants or she needs to pay the dinner. Very good. Sorry, I would like, but I have to work, okay? Yes, I really like to eat with you tomorrow. Excellent. Would you like to go? Would you like to go and take a breakfast? Would you like to take a breakfast tomorrow morning? Would you like to come to my house to watch a movie? Oh, very good. Excellent. Okay, I I really like your answers. They are very interesting. They are very good answers. But it's the end. We are going to end the session right now. Uh, we have another one. No, I wouldn't like pop music. Excellent. Thank you. So, finally, this is the last session of this week. We have end this week number three. So, we are just going to have one more week and we are going to end this course. So, thank you for your time. Have a really good night. Have a really good weekend and see you on Monday. Okay, teacher. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good morning. Good night.